Hi guys, what's up? Thanks so much for tuning in to Ants Canada, another episode. And for this video, I wanted to do an update on some of my colonies now. A lot of you guys have been asking me, please update, do an update video as to what colonies you have now. And so I wanted to uh, show you what ants I am currently keeping. And so I wanted to start with this really boisterous colony that I have. Uh, these are ghost ants. The scientific name is Tapenoma melanocephalum. And the reason why they're called ghost ants is because they have almost transparent gasters. Like their gasters are almost see-through. If you were to feed them a colored liquid, it would you, it would be seen right through their gaster and you could see the color really brightly. And in fact, a lot of the photos that go around online of ants drinking from food colored drops and then you see those colors in their gasters. Those are these ants. They're um, Tapenoma melanocephalum. Now they're so energetic. They move really, really fast. And they're very tiny little things. I would say about a millimeter or two in body length. Now these guys are pantropical, which means they are found in nearly all tropical regions. Um, and they've been spotted in some temperate regions too, like in, in isolated cases, like in a building in New York and all of that. But for the most part, they can't survive in a temperate region. They live in tropical areas and subtropical areas. Now I've noticed these guys love sweets and it's funny, they'll eat any sort of su sugary stuff, um, including pop, you know, like orange pop and Coca-Cola, Sprite, Mountain Dew. I just put um, some sweet fluid, like um, it's a syrup, at towards the entrance there. And so they're moving back and forth and drinking from it. Here in Southeast Asia, if you leave, I don't know, a little tiny puddle of pop or something on the table, these ants will be on it super quick. Now another th cool thing about these colonies is they can have many, many queens. And I'll show you in a sec. You see them? Those are queens. Those are not large workers. Those are all queens. There are about 30 queens in this colony. A friend of mine collected this colony um, here in the Philippines. He just brushed them into a little container. Um, the, these ants are very nomadic. They like to move places and the queens are so exposed. You see a lot of brood there. I really hope this colony will just explode in population. Right now they're staying in a Tetramorium hybrid nest, small, from Ants Canada. This design is, well, it was inspired by Tetramorium, um, but, uh, but you could use it for most small ants as well. It's got like a, almost like a labyrinth type design very linear. You see, it's funny, the workers have really light abdomens, but the queens have the opposite. They have dark abdomens, dark gasters. Now, I usually don't recommend people keep multi-queen colonies because um, usually it's hard, especially if you're trying to found them together. Queens will often fight and they'll eliminate each other at the end. Um, they'll raise their brood cooperatively, which is known as pleometrosis. And then what will typically happen in captivity is the ants will, the, the queen ants will eventually battle to the death as soon as workers arrive. Um, and uh, and you don't want to risk sustained injuries for one or both queens. Um, it's really risky. So I always recommend people keep their ant colonies 
with single queens only. Um, and that goes for ants that are known to be poly polygynous, like Formica um, and some other species. But there are some species that are very, truly, truly polygynous, like as in colonies will mix and they'll even recruit each other. Queens don't mind being with other queens. Uh, species like that include um, Argentine ants and, uh, of course, these ants, Tapinoma melanocephalum. They, these ants are unique in that they kind of form super colonies where queens really won't even fight once workers arrive. So uh, in this case, I'm keeping a big community of several queens together. And they were caught that way in the wild, so I'm going to keep them that way. Now, for these girls, I don't really have an outworld for them yet. Um, they're just so small. I feel like I just want to feed them through test tubes at the moment. But eventually, I'll be connecting this colony to an AC outworld. This is a piece of coconut jelly that I put here, and it looks like the workers are enjoying all of that sweet stuff. All right, on to the next colony. Now here is a Camponatus colony. Now these uh, were wild caught and they came to me actually last night. Um, it looks like there's a queen and then several workers, but it came with no brood. Uh, so, I don't know. Not, not sure how well these guys will do. I'm hoping they will do well. I'm hoping this queen will start laying soon. Meanwhile, I've put them in a Camponatus hybrid nest. And I've been feeding them sweet stuff and mealworms. It seems like last night they had a little bit of... Little bit of um, the sweet stuff, I provided them some honey and water. So I'm just letting them settle in for a bit. I also noticed that some of them have mites. So i um, not sure how that's going to affect the colony. I've never had a colony with mites. Or at least that I could see. <laughs> but of course with Camponatus, they're so large I can see any foreign bodies that are on any of them. Um, and right now it looks like they're just kind of resting and chilling out. Very typical Camponotis. You see, you see that worker? See how that worker has something attached to her leg? That's a mite. Now what these parasites do is they kind of like suck hemolymph through the exoskeleton, so they'll suck those juices out of the ants. I'm not too sure if they can kill the ants. I, d I don't know. It's... I I again, I've never had an ant colony infected by mites that I could see. I wanted to check back on these girls. It seems they discovered some of the sweet food I put in there, and a few of them are fat. Like, see this worker over here? She's full, full of the new food that I've put there. Her gaster is really blown up and she's transferring food mouth to mouth to other workers. This process is called trophallaxis. It allows the entire colony to be fed without having all of them leave the nest. By the way, guys, these are the AC outworlds that I'm using for the colonies. Um, this, of course, is for the Camponatus colony, and this is the outworld I'll be using for the Tapenoma melanocephalum, the ghost ants. Um, and I just wanted to show you what I did to decorate it. Instead of using the ground plate like I've used for, well, my Feodoli colony that you've seen in my previous videos, and you know, usually we use a grout or cement and then we decorate it and that way the ground plate is hard and the ants can't dig in it. Well, um, in this case, I wanted to try using just really big 
pebbles for the ground and not using any cement or, or uh, grout. Um, you can also do this, in fact. And um, the idea is the ants typically won't nest in here. Well, Campanotis certainly won't nest in here. One, because the uh, spaces are too small to accommodate the colony in between the rocks. And it just doesn't make a good nesting medium. So I am pretty confident they won't make a nest here in this outworld. Um, even though the ground is loose. Let's see. It's loose. And it's completely dry too. So it's unfit for nesting material and for them to nest inside. So you could do that too if you don't have access to cement or grout. It's just a simple way. And these fake plants here are just secured using the pebbles. Now I've got this colony attached by a tube to an AC outworld. I've put a little Q-tip there, soaked in honey water in case they venture out into the outworld. And last night I saw one of the workers, or two of the workers, uh, foraging the outworld, so that was a good sign. I suspect this Campanotis species is most active at night. I have to observe them more to learn more about them. Of course, in ant-keeping, it's all about uh, learning and trial and error, so a lot of it is just kind of like winging it in terms of their care. You just kind of have to observe them, see what they like, see when they like to eat. I can tell that a lot of the workers had their fill. If you look carefully, you can see the gasters of some of them. They're really full. Now, as mentioned before, this is a very young colony and they're inhabiting a Campanotis hybrid nest. It's the hybrid nest that was inspired by the genus. Um, very linear walls, very linear chambers, and right now the colony is resting, which is typical of a young colony. There isn't a lot of activity at first for small colonies because, well, they're easily fed and the demands are less. I'm just happy they enjoyed the food that I offered them. They liked the sweet jelly coconut. It seems Campanotis have a sweet tooth. There are ants that really, really like sweets. As much as they eat proteins as well, like insects, um, I find they really love their sweets. You know, a slice of honey. Um, and I'm happy to know that these Asian Campanotis also love sweets. Really interesting. Here's a closer look at a worker with one of those mites that I'm talking about. If you look carefully at the leg, you'll see like a little tiny mite attached right there and what it's doing is it's feeding off the ants hemolymph it's pesky now I've heard of some people literally trying to dust them off using baby powder but I'm not gonna even try that I'm sure they're just a pest and nuisance let's see if this colony manages to survive well I'm assuming that as long as the mite population is under control, it won't affect the colony growth. That would kind of be sad if a species completely pro proliferates on its host and then like to the point that it's killing the ants and then they kill their own food source. So I'm assuming it's not super detrimental to the colony to have parasites like that. But who knows, we'll see. And I'm going to cover their nest now so they can have some privacy. And of course, you've seen my Fedoli colony here. They are doing so well. It's um, really fantastic. They've really shaped this hybrid nest into their own. Like, it doesn't even look like an artificial nest anymore. I find the nest looks like a wild nest. The way they've shaped all of the grains of sand from the outworld into this new space, it's really, really neat how they've innovated the inside of the hybrid nest to tailor it to make it their own. This is one of the brood chambers. Now if you look here, you'll notice that the ants have 
completely blocked off certain rooms. It seems the ants know exactly how much space they need for their size and um, they just block off the area. They've done that to several rooms in this nest actually. And I love that. I love how ants can customize their living space according to what they need, according to how they want their nest hydrated. It's really cool. And there's their outworld. It's kind of messy, so I'm going to clean clean it right now. Okay, so let's start cleaning this. Here's an old grape. Um, here's some oats. I'm going to clean them. I like to give my ants variety, and it really it shows that uh, the benefits really show. Ants like people need all their vitamins and nutrients, and you can't expect for them to get it by just feeding them one food source. There you go. Little piece of dried apple there. Of course, you want to make sure there are no ants on the items that you're removing. They're eating this toothpick full of uh, coconut jelly. They leave the exoskeleton of the insects that I feed them. And they depend on me to clean it up. Oops. They're all in a mad dash now. Okay. Almost done here. Now I like to spot clean my outworlds like this. Tweezers come in handy. It's a little trickier when you have a stinging species. Like back when I used to have Solenopsis geminata. Forget it, I could never do something like this. To clean an outworld, I had to move the ants out of the outworld by attaching new outworlds and making the dirty outworld the furthest unit in the connection. So like the ants eventually learn that it's a deserted far off place and they don't go in that outworld anymore. Then I disconnect it, and then that's when I clean it. But for these ants, it's very manageable to just pick clean. And these Fedoli ants don't sting me. They don't sting. Well, th they sting, but we humans can't feel it. All right, and we're clean again. Let's add some of the shrubbery off to the side here. Note to self, don't feed them rolled oats anymore, unless it's in a little dish. All right, there we go. And the outworld is clean. Yay. I super love this colony. They have such, I don't know, personality. They're so industrious, like all ants, but something about these Fedoli ants that I really like. They're endearing. They kind of are all rattled because I was cleaning the route world. But earlier they were feasting on this coconut jelly. They love it. Now I feed these guys um, a variety of sweets and also uh, insects, superworms, and uh, cockroaches. And there you have it guys, my three colonies, very simple. Um, it's not as many colonies as I used to have, um, and you might have seen in previous videos. Um, but if you know me, I am always changing my colonies. I come into possession of new colonies, I keep them for a bit, I grow them and learn about them, and then um, I set them free, or I rehome them, I pass them on to somebody else. I love keeping ants, but I like to... The, I like I enjoy the experience more than anything. Um, some people like to collect species and they enjoy collecting and having a big collection. Um, but me, I enjoy just kind of starting small and then growing them into a big colony until I can't keep them anymore or 
until uh, someone else wants them or until I decide to set them free. And that for me is very fulfilling. And so I hope you liked this video. Thanks so much. Stay tuned for our next video. Of course, we upload every first and third Monday of the month. And love forever, guys. Bye. Thanks so much, guys, for watching our brand new video. Be sure to subscribe if you liked what you saw. And don't forget to check out our very helpful ant tutorial playlist where we teach you how to keep ants like a pro. And don't forget to also check out our very popular Solenopsis Geminata playlist. Finally, for all of your pro ant keeping needs and for information on pro ant keeping, be sure to visit antscanada.com. We also have a section where we sell ants depending on what city you live, so check out our Queen Ants for Sale section. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.